Good morning and welcome to the Extension Connection. This morning you have the Morton County Extension staff joining you today. This is Carla Mickle, 4 Chief Development Agent, and joining me in the studio live right away yeah. this morning. Yeah, Liz Larson with the Parent Resource Center, and Vanessa will be here in a bit. Yep, um, she's on her way here um, from the office. And um, we have a few things to visit with you about this morning. Um, I guess I, I'm going to start off. Um, I'll visit with what I'm going to talk about. And then, Liz, you can give us um, your topics for the day. Um, but it is the season of the winter blues. And wah, I wah. have them. Yeah. <laughs> I have them. I, I'm, like everybody else, um, I'm tired of the snow. I'm tired of getting up every morning, seeing all the snow that you have to shovel. Um snow off of your car just everything mm, trying and to get around all the plows exactly. and being respectful of them trying to do their jobs yep. it's crazy I know it's, out there yeah it's hard work for them and um, I know they're just as sick of it as we are so we're going to talk a little bit about how to beat the winter blues this morning and then I also have an app um, with the cold temperatures coming up because it sounds like we're going to dip again way down below zero and mm-hmm. um, have some um, pretty high wind chill numbers and uh, we're going to talk about a winter survival kit app um, that NDSU created here um, a couple years ago and that can help you out quite a bit if you get stranded. Um, so we'll talk about that. And I have a couple 4-H just dates to throw out at everybody as well. So Liz, what kind of topics do you have for us today? I am going to highlight um, our big push this year. The start of the year is called the family table. So extension is highlighting the importance of family meals and family time together around the table. Um, it's a great little push here if you especially if you're looking for maybe a new year's resolution that doesn't involve fighting off everybody else at the gym or whatever else um so we'll talk a little bit about the benefits of that and highlight how you can get connected to the resources and yeah so do a lot of that um maybe some talking tips at the table how to keep people engaged and then um, a reminder about some classes i have coming up as well And we'll have to wait and see what Vanessa has. Yeah, I know Mm -hmm. that. I visited with her this morning, and she said she was going to talk about those of us who have already given up on our New Year's resolutions. Ah, (laughs) so things that you could do. It's the theme of January. I know. It's terrible. Snow and winter blues and giving Mm. up on our New Year's resolutions. So... Um, I guess to start here, we have um, a winter survival app um, that NDSU actually created here, uh, again, a couple years ago. And it's a great app to have. Um, the Winter Survival Kit smart app, smartphone app, it can be critical as a physical winter survival kit if you find yourself stuck or stranded in severe winter weather conditions. And we know as of January 11th today, mm-hmm. we've had a lot of those. I mean, just um, the courthouse being closed. We've been we've closed. Had, yeah, like three, three days, I yeah, think, already crazy. this year. And we have a lot of winter left, unfortunately. Um, So this winter survival kit app will help you find your current location. It'll call 911. It can notify your friends and family, calculate how long you can run your engine to keep warm and safe and stay safe from carbon monoxide poisoning, of course. Um, Mm. The app is free to download on Google Play and the iTunes App Store. You can download it as well. Um, And it's good for um, smartphones. Um, You can use the Winter Survival Kit app to store important phone and policy numbers for insurance or roadside assistance. My AAA number is in there. I love that. that's a good one. Yep. Um, You can also designate emergency contacts who you want to alert when you become stranded, which is really nice. Um, so Without having to drain your phone battery of searching and calling. Exactly. That's great. Yep. Um, If you become stranded, the Winter Survival Kit app will help you determine your geographic location, and it'll also contact emergency services. There's a gas calculator on the app as well, which I think is pretty cool. I've that never had to cool. use it. Thank goodness. Yeah, yeah thankfully. <laughs> um, but it'll help you estimate how long you can run your engine on the fuel that you have remaining. Um, the Winter Survival Kit will also alert you every 30 minutes um, to remind you to periodically turn off your engine and to check your, check your exhaust pipe for snow buildup. And, of course, with all the snow we have, that can happen pretty quickly. And um, these alerts are critical in helping you um, to avoid deadly carbon monoxide poisoning. Um, the app also provides NDSU Extension Service information on how to put together a physical – or the winter survival app – that Mm -hmm. NDSU provides. We'll also um, give you some great ideas on how to put together a physical winter survival kit and prepare your vehicle for winter driving and how to stay safe when stranded in a winter storm. And I know that I probably don't have all my winter survival gear in my car. I know I don't have all Um, of mine. I've got blankets. I've got, um, of course, my sleeping bag and some things like that, but I should um, put my extra boots in there and my shovel and all that good stuff. I think I maybe ate all my granola bars last (laughs) year, so I should probably read... Restock up. Yeah, check all that food that you might have in there. Mm-hmm. So, 
Um, the next one I have um, to visit with about again, and I'm suffering from it, the winter blues. Mm -hmm. um, the seasons play a large role on our mood, of course, and with all the extra snow we've had and how early it came this year, um, there's a lot of people that are saying it is cold and dark and just dreary, and it really can play um, havoc with your mood. And um, there's some great tips here on how to help you survive dark, cold winter months. Um, managing stress. If you find that during the winter, you have a reduced ability to handle stress, and I do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, drivers, yeah. other drivers out there, and, and different things that you have to worry about. I mean, it's recommended that you do whatever you can to minimize stress. Plan ahead. Don't take on a big project with a springtime deadline when you know that the winter months can definitely be difficult and affect you. Be mindfulness. Um, it's an excellent technique to reduce stress because it allows you to stop feeling out of control, to stop jumping from one thought to the next, and to stop ruminating on negative thoughts. Overall, it's a great way to make it through your busy day in a calm and productive manner. Um, another really great way to beat the winter blues mm -hmm. is one of those New Year's resolutions, exercise. And um, we all know that exercise, it's great for physical to be physically fit, but exercise can also be extremely helpful blues busting technique. Um, it can provide positive impact on depression, anxiety, ADHD, and more. And it also relieves stress, improves memory, helps you sleep better, which is wonderful, yes. and boosts your overall mood. You don't have to be a fitness fanatic to reap the benefits. Research indicates that modest amounts of exercise can make a difference. No matter your age or fitness level, you can learn to use exercise as a powerful tool to feel better. And of course, eating healthy. You know, this time of year, um, it's really easy. Snacks all over the place. We might have froze some goodies yep, after the some holidays. Leftovers. Yep. And so we want to make sure. Comfort foods. Yeah. That are high calories. Sweets, sugars, all mm -hmm. that good stuff. Um, we want to, we know we often crave sweets and starches. So to boost your energy briefly in the wake, we often feel tired and lethargic. There's also unwelcome result is extra pounds on our hips or belly, which are hard to take off when winter is over, not to mention bad for your health. You should try to eat diets high in proteins, vegetables, unprocessed foods, and complex carbohydrates. Um, the Extension Service actually has uh, a few tips on eating healthy. Um, actually, quite a few tips on eating healthy yeah, if you'd like some good. additional information. But you want to go into winter with a plan to beat those winter blues by knowing how you manage stress, exercise, eating healthy, when the days get shorter and the temperatures drop, which is, of course, what we're struggling with right now. So mm -hmm. if you it's need... good to kind of, yeah. like you said, know what triggers you. Yeah. You know, kind of be proactive so that when you see those signs, you can say, okay, I'm going to yep. go up and down the stairs a few more times exactly. to get those extra steps just in. Just or... be a little more active mm -hmm. and um, just going you know, to get those winter blues, shake those winter blues. So um, Jim is signaling us for a break, and so we will be right back with the Extension Connection. Currently, it's five below. Here, Sean Hannity. Weekday afternoons on Super Talk 1270. And welcome back to the Extension Connection. Again, this is the Morton County Extension staff here with you this morning. And this is Carla Mickle, for Chief Development Extension Agent. Just a couple things to wrap up on from the 4-H standpoint and things that I need to talk about today or I'd like to talk about is that this past week here, actually Monday night, we started crop hippology, livestock, and archery workouts. Yes, everything in one night. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> that's how good night. we are. It was mm -hmm. a big night. There was kids and, everywhere. And if kids can't <laughs> find something they like, that's just, yeah, that's their own problem. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But who wouldn't want to learn all about crops in North Dakota and yeah. what good crops there are? So, and crop, horses. I know. And equine, we got everything horses. And livestock, you know, great opportunity to learn some decision-making skills and um, communication skills with mm -hmm. your giving of your reasons and archery, the teamwork and responsibility and the self-esteem that that really grows um, in our youth today. So a lot of life skills that you can get from these four activities. Um, and connected with other kids. I know. Mm -hmm. That's the best Tons part. of them around. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. And not only in our county, but it, across the whole state. And yeah. then if they excel, they even get to do some traveling. Exactly. All of those things, yes. they get a chance to travel. Yep. Like Jackie just came back from Denver, um, of course, and she took the livestock judging team. They did wonderful. Um, taking uh, an archery team here to nationals and a hunting skills team to nationals this year, and um, hippology and crop judging, just a lot of really wonderful things. So if you are interested in learning about crops in North Dakota and how to pick out the good part of the crop and the not so good part of the crop with disease and things like that, they are meeting at Mandan High School right after school on Monday nights. 
hippology, which is the study of equine. A little bit of horse judging in there, too, which we're going to tweak this weekend because we're taking some kids to the horse judging clinic in Fargo. Um, they are meeting Monday nights at the Morton County Courthouse, 7 o'clock. Livestock judging, they met. They had a pretty large size group too. And that wasn't everybody Monday night. I was really surprised, but a really fun group of kids. Livestock judging workouts are being held Monday nights, Morton County Courthouse, 7 o'clock PM. Archery workouts, if you would like to um, better your skills at archery, or maybe you're a beginner archer, um, we are meeting over at Nishu Bowman at 6 o'clock is our first session. That's for our, our younger youth. And then um, our older youth will be um, having a workout at 7 o'clock. And if you don't have your own bow, that's fine because we have some. We have Genesis bows that the kids can use. And um, it's a great time. We have 3D targets here. Morton County has purchased um, Morton County Fort Shooting Sports and um, all kinds of tic-tac-toe and um, what else do we have? Um, darts. We've got a dart board that you can actually shoot at uh, or paper dart board anyway. And um, the kids will have a lot of fun. Um, just gaining some knowledge in archery. And then we have a youth archery tournament. Our first one um, is January 21st, and that is at Nishu Bowman. If you're interested in registering for that event, um, I encourage you to contact our office at 667-3340, and we can get you set up with the 4-H Youth Archery. And of course, um, here as the other events come closer um, for us, um, we will give you those as well when the first livestock judging event is. Hippology and when the first crop judging event is. So, all well, kinds know, of stuff and when going I think on. of all of those things, a lot of times those are great opportunities for kids to learn about something that maybe their parents have yes. been interested in. Mm -hmm. And so, it's a way to connect with your with your child too. Yep. Um, archery, for example, you know, if you're an avid hunter and you, you that's something that you would like to instill the love of that in your mm -hmm. children, it's a great opportunity for mom or dad to be yep. the designated person to yep. bring them to shooting sports mm -hmm. or or a livestock judging or whatever it might be, but that's a great time. Yep. A story with archery is Cami in our office, of course. Her daughter finally got old enough to join archery. She was so excited. And um, she showed up on Monday night for her first workout. And um, Cami's husband, Chris, um, was there. And he's going to go through archery instructor training here at the end of the month. And um, he's like, I think I could dig out my old bowl from downstairs. It's his brother's or somebody's. I'm not exactly sure. But something that they can do together. So really right. creating those opportunities. Mm -hmm. um, what a great gift. So yeah. very it's, exciting. It's really fun to be be able to give kids yep. to give kids the opportunity to spend time yep. with their parents in an enjoyable, meaningful way. Exactly. Exactly. So, and the but, parents don't have to be fully responsible, right? They get to have a little fun right. too. Yeah. Well, exactly. and they don't have to be the expert yeah. either. Right. You yep. know, you and can have a love right of it along and learning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I guess yep. with that note, just one other thing, is that if any of you out there are interested in becoming archery instructors and helping us out in the 4-H world of archery, which is really fun, by the way, um, probably one of the most rewarding things that I do because um, it's neat to see the kids every week and it's neat to be able to help them um, adjust their stance and, you know, pulling back and all. I mean, just like everything and, and where they um, anchor their, their string with their bow. And um, if you're interested in becoming an archery instructor, I encourage you to contact our office. Um, Morton County 4-H Council pays for any adult training that we have. And we do have a training coming up here the last Sunday of the month, January 29th, over at the Burley County Extension Office. So. I encourage you to give us a call, 667-3340. And know so. that if you sign up to be a volunteer, you don't have to go every week. True that. Ah, good <laughs> yes. to note. Yep. You know, and you will have other support. It won't be like yes. you're on your own. No. You'll have other supports there with you. So yep. it's a learning opportunity too. Yep, exactly. So, Well, that is um, um, me in a wrap, I guess, um, <laughs> for 4-H and <laughs> 4 different activities that I'm, I'm working with right now. So um, Liz, you have some yeah. things, and I know they tie in with what, what Vanessa was going to talk about. Yeah, so. well, I thought... I I, like I mentioned earlier, we're kind of talking about the family table for this month. Well, all year long, actually. Mm -hmm. um, and an extension has, what are we calling it, the Family Table Challenge, I believe. Yes. Um, so you can check out our extension website. It's right there on the front page of the whole extension website. Um, and it's really great because it's bringing a whole bunch of us together in a bunch of different fields and areas of expertise um, and really highlighting the importance of those family meals and family time together. Mm -hmm. so, and I, sometimes we think we forget because it's such a simple thing, but it's right. not simple. Right. There's many <laughs> layers. It's yes. like an onion, right? <laughs> um, layers of benefits and layers of ways you can interact with your family. So I thought I'd bring along um, a piece by Sean Brotherson, one of our specialist with extension and kind of highlight what are the benefits why are why are we talking about it and why are we doing it all year long right mm -hmm. I mean we have a year's worth of material that everyone can benefit from um, so sharing the 
you know, those lasting and powerful traditions. You think of even holidays or times that you have a family meal. And many of us think back to our own childhood, and that was a crucial kind of regular time that you and your family connected. Um, so you can share that family meal time, and you really experience it with all your senses. So your sight, touch, taste, smell, um, you know, listening to that laughter, conversation, all that good stuff. Um, like I said, it can kind of creates a regular, consistent time for you to have shared experiences, share about your day, um, and there's just a variety of benefits to children and parents both. So everybody in the family benefits, or extended family, grandparents, you know, if you have family friends that live in the area. Um, so the family-centered meal is that opportunity to connect with each other, communicate maybe about family happenings, um, things coming up, things you need to plan for, uh, you giving each other some designated time and attention. Uh, it's so easy. Our schedules are very busy, and you're kind of catching each other in the car or dropping people off or whatever it is. Or only um, texting each other. <clears throat> yes, yes. So some face-to-face -face mm -hmm. conversations, right? Um, so you want to make sure that you're just making them frequent, have some fun with it, and that it's family-centered. So we'll talk a little bit more about what gets in the way of that in a bit here. But um, research su suggests that more than half of families with children in the U.S. share a meal five or more times a week. Um, however, right now, that 30 to 35 percent of families often eat less than three meals even together a week. Um, so that's less time to communicate, less time to connect with one another. Um, and a lot of factors go into why that is. There's a lot of changes in family schedules, work schedules, a lot more single parent households. So um, it's just a lot more responsibilities kind of falling to one parent, perhaps. Um, and all those kinds of things just make eating that eating the meal together more difficult. Um, so, but you should still try to, you know, put it in your planner or put it on your Outlook calendar or whatever it is. Text each other reminders, um, all that kind of stuff. Um, so, again, making sure there's lots of fun. Uh, we'll talk a little bit later about some conversation starters that you can use. Um, so you don't have that dead that dead time. Dead at time, the right? <laughs> Looking at each other like, okay, we're here. Yeah. We got the food. What do we do now, right? Um and try to avoid it being a disciplinary occasion. So if you have to have, you know, some lectures or whatever it might be, um, saving that for another time and maybe make it more of a sacred family time together. Um, so focus on it being positive versus, all right, we're having a family meeting. You know, everyone sit down. Mm -hmm. um, or now that I have you cornered in, uh, at the table, exactly. now let's really dig into what's yeah. going wrong here. Talk about not being helpful for, for digestion. Yeah. I mean, if you're <laughs> under stress as a kid... Yeah. That's not very much. Um, <clears throat> so before we go to break, I'll just remind you again, that means taking out TVs, computers, cell phones. Um, I've seen lots of creative ways stacking the cell phones and, you know, whoever grabs for it first has to do all the dishes or whatever it might be. <laughs> um, so, totally unplugging. Yes, totally unplugging during that hour or less. So when we come back from a break, we'll talk a little bit more about all the benefits of family mealtime and this extension connection. Currently, it's five below. The home for ABC News at the top of the hour is Super Talk 1270. All right, we are back with the Extension Connection. This is the Morton County Extension crew. Um, Carla had to run out. We're, we're always coming and going, right? We're busy <laughs> folks. We are just very busy in our office. Um, but Vanessa and I are still here, and I'm going to talk a little bit more. Before the break, we were talking about the benefits of fam the family table, the family meal. Um, again, I'll remind you, you can check out the family table on Facebook. Um, it's on all of our Facebook pages. I think we've linked mm -hmm. it up. Um, but they have their own Facebook page as well. You can get connected with the uh, the challenge there and you get some newsletters and information throughout the entire year which is well, great yeah and the posts will share conversation starters as you mentioned mm -hmm. we're going to talk about in a little bit and also some recipes that you might want to try as yeah, something mix could it become up a, a little. new family favorite kind of thing mm -hmm. and yeah opportunities for the new year um so i thought i'd highlight a few of the benefits um you know kind of sometimes to motivate yourself to do a challenge or change a change your lifestyle really mm -hmm. is what we're encouraging people to do. You want to know the benefits, the why, why is it that important kind of thing. Um, so you get a whole bunch of the family 
gets a whole bunch of benefits in general, um, starting with kind of building that family unity and identity. Um, you get to kind of pass along values, attitudes, traditions. Uh, we think about the foods that you make. Maybe you're making a new family tradition. Um, maybe it's something that you're making for your kids that you grew up with. It's kind of your cultural or ethnic heritage. Um, I know I learned a lot of foods when I moved to North Dakota, even from Minnesota. There's a lot of different foods out here that the Germans make that I hadn't experienced yet. Oh, yeah. This so, little Norwegian girl learned a lot. Yes, too. exactly. Um, you That family mealtime means that you're having daily communication, strengthening that connection. Um, again, we know when our relationships are closer than when it comes time to a moment of tension or maybe there's a disagreement. It's going to be easier to work through that if you have those positive moments throughout your week, too. Um, you're teaching kids about patience and respect when you're communicating, um, you know, making sure everyone gets a, t a chance to talk around the table. Um, everyone's opinions matter, everyone's experiences of their day, those types of things. Um, and just enjoying each other in that relaxed setting. Uh, that if it's something everyone looks forward to and knows is happening during the day, um, it's not a, a stress moment or a crisis, right? You don't want to just come together as a group when there's a crisis in the family. Um, as far as kids, there's also lots of benefits to the family meals specifically for them. Uh, in two different studies, 79% of teenagers indicated that they very much enjoyed eating meals together with their family. Um, I think that's an interesting stat because not everyone expects teens to want to spend time mm -hmm. with their family, right? They're really concentrated on their social lives, um, but it's really important, and they see it as a value, too. And and if asked person to person, face to face, they might not answer it that way. Yes, but, but anonymously in a survey, we've gotten the truth, yeah. and the truth <laughs> is they like it. Um, yeah, so children are helped in a variety of specific ways. Uh, you think about the language that they gain, you know, children of all age, all ages, um, working on their vocabulary, uh, even their comfort level with talking with people of different generations, um, each other, all of that kind of stuff. Uh, parents get that opportunity to kind of be aware of what's going on with your kids as far as their lives, who they're hanging out with. Uh, what their interests are, um, even their mood. You know, if you're checking in with them on a daily or, you know, a couple times a week, um, you're going to know when they're having a downtime and kind of be able to catch that before they get into some behavior issues or really like any kind of depression or any kind of stuff like that. You'll know your kid's norm. Um, gives that regular stru structure and routine to a child's day. We know the little kids especially like structure and um, knowing that they can reliably count on their parents to be there every night for dinner or whatever the time is. Um, like I said, language acquisition, literacy development, you know, you can bring in the newspaper or something mm -hmm. that you've read. Um, and then really these family mealtimes are create an important protective factor. So with research, we found that it's a you know, regular family mealtime is associated with a variety of positive outcomes, uh, including decreased risk of substance use or delinquency, um, heightened personal and social well-being, and overall better academic performance. Um, so who doesn't want those things for their That's kids right. in their lives, right? Mm -hmm. And then lastly, there's all these health benefits. And I know Vanessa's got a ton of stuff that she shares, too, as far as um, healthy eating and portion size. You know, if you're talking as you're eating, you're going to recognize when you're full and stopping when you're full versus overeating. Oh, well, you're just going to slow down. <clears throat> yep. Overall, you know, slow if down. You're, if you're talking, you're not you're not able to just continue to shovel things in. And yes, exactly. Continue. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of associated with improved dietary intake. So they actually find an increased consumption of fruits, vegetables, healthy grains, and other healthy food choices, and decrease that uh, amount of soft drinks or other unhealthy fatty foods that you're having. Um, so again, you get to, you know, make sure you're eating enough fruits and veggies, and and then modeling that for your kids as well. And just trying new foods happens yep. more yeah. easily in a positive environment mm -hmm. like that. Yep, exactly. The whole family is trying it, and mm -hmm. it's an experience, even if. Maybe no one loves it, and you're not going to have it again. That's you try okay. it together. Yeah, you try it together. That's well, right. and that's why the family table challenge is great. Like you said, bring in some new recipes that might be the same stuff in your cupboard, just made a little differently. Mm -hmm. um, and then it, 
The last one is it's associated with a reduced risk of childhood obesity in both children and adolescents. Um, so tons of benefits. And like I said, I'll share a few, just a couple um, conversation starters, and then we can pass it over to Vanessa. So I thought I'd bring a couple questions. Um, so for the little kids, it could be simple things like, do you like stripes or polka dots? Um, or names. And why? And why, <laughs> yeah. What's your favorite shirt? Um, name something that a cat can do, right? So, ah. I mean, they could be very random questions. Um, for the little ones, talk about colors. What color do you like best? What colors are on the table? Um, all sorts of different stuff. And then we have these great conversation starters from Parents Lead. So it's kind of for older kids, teenagers, that kind of stuff. And if you want, if you call in and give us your own conversation starter or maybe a family tradition you do around the table, we'll pass these out to you. We'll mail you a deck of cards, um, and you can have conversation starters for the whole year. So some of those are, what's your favorite day of the week? And following it up with why. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's Monday, well, probably not Monday, but (laughs) what do you like to do for fun? Um, or what is the best compliment you've ever received? So that's a good positive conversations um, to get past the whole, how was your day? Good, yeah. fine, mm-hmm. moving on. Um, the same. The same, <laughs> right? So, well, And I think the great thing to remember about the conversation starters is that even though some of them sound kind of silly, um, mm-hmm. remembering that it's not just for the kids to answer, it's also for the adults to answer too. Right, that's and, true. And that, that becomes an opportunity to to learn a little bit more about each other's humor and learn mm-hmm. a little bit more vocabulary and um, kind of just let your guard down a little bit and, and begin to just kind of let loose with with a little bit more and a few more sides of your personality yes. that maybe yeah. isn't necessarily out there all the time. Exactly. You get to share some stories of your own childhood or things that are going on in your day. I mean, how often do kids get to hear about how their parents' days went? Mm-hmm. You know, it's kind of a one-sided conversation so yeah yeah some fun things that we're doing with the family table so feel free to call our office or like I said go online check out the Facebook page um, lots of good stuff out there this yeah year. and so if you want if they wanted to call in with their conversation starter and get a deck of cards should they call 667-3342 yes and we've got plenty of decks so yeah first come first serve there you go there you go that would be <laughs> yep. fun exactly you too can win Yes, yes. <laughs> well, I'm going to slide in here and talk about a couple different programs that we have coming up. Um, one of them is a, a workshop about long-term health care planning for North Dakota farmers and ranchers. And I know we talked a little bit about that the last time we were on, but I brought a little bit more information for folks who might be considering this. Um, we are offering this in four different sites as an in-person workshop. One of those will be um, will be offered here in Bismarck. And then there are also nine other sites around the state that will be a video streaming site. So it does kind of open it up so that probably no matter where you are in the state, we have something close, close to you. Close by. You yeah, can whether get there. It's, yeah, whether it's in in-person or, or a video opportunity. And what we're going to be covering during this is really talking about all the ins and outs of long-term health care. And so during this one, one workshop, um, we'll be talking about the importance of having long-term, of a long-term health care plan, um, understanding Medicare and what health costs it does and does not pay for, um, understanding how Medicaid coverage can work into that, and then also looking at long-term care insurance as a health care planning tool. And, you know, a lot of times I think we always hate to buy more insurance than we need. And uh, But then on the other hand, you never want to be the person that says, I wish I had more. Right, um, exactly. Because then and it's too little, too late. That is right. And so some uh, maybe some facts and some things to think about is that according to the American Association for Long-Term Health Care Insurance, the cost for a private room in a nursing home is now about $92,000. A year. A year. Oof. Yeah, so when you think about that, and then the premium rates increase um, 2 to 4% in your 50s and 6 to 8% in your 60s. So it is a decision that you want to make uh, before you need it. And so we'll talk a little bit more about when and where these workshops are going to be handled, or are going to be held uh, right after the break. And we'll be back in a few minutes with the Extension Connection. Currently, it's too below. 
Dave Ramsey is heard here. Super Talk 1270. And we're welcome back with the Extension Connection. This is the Morton County Extension Office. This is Vanessa Hoynes, the Family Consumer Science Agent here from Morton County. And before the break, we were talking about the long-term health care planning workshop that's coming up uh, in February, actually. And I mentioned that there are four sites uh, where you can attend the workshop in person. Uh, the first one will be in Fargo on February 13th. The Bismarck location will be here at the Bismarck Event Center on February 14th. Um, in Minot, it will be on the 15th, and then in Grand Forks, it will be on February 16th. So those are opportunities to attend to attend those particular workshops in person. If you're interested in a video streaming site, if that one of these would be closer for you, these will all happen on Monday, February 13th at 1.30, and I didn't mention the times before. The Bismarck location here is at 1.30 also on February 14th. But the video sites will be handled in Ashley, Beach, Carrington, Hedinger, Langdon, Linton, Mohall, Towner, and Williston. And so hopefully one of those sites will be close to you. If you're interested in registering or you would like some more information, you're welcome to come to our Morton County Extension Service website. Take a look there. You'll find a link where you can find out a little more information. The uh, registration is also available there online to register. Um, it's an easy process. It's $20 per person and $25 per couple if you are interested in attending this two and a half hour session. Uh, the program will be taught by uh, University of Minnesota Extension educator Gary Hatchfeld, and he is an expert in this area. Um, and so we're really pleased that he's uh, able to work with us here in, in North Dakota and partnered here with NDSU Extension to bring this program to our, to our state. So if you have any, have any questions, you're welcome to give me a call, check out our website, and um, we'd love to have you come and attend. Well, and what a deal that you can, for only five bucks more, you can both come as a couple and, and really both be educated and, right. and have those conversations and, and, you know, Knowing just, again, kind of with the family table piece, too, it's just so important to have an opportunity to talk about those things together rather than one person going and bringing back the information with their, from their perspective. And I, right, I, exactly. that's so important to have, to have both, both listening. The other piece is that the plan is to um, record and offer this same workshop through um, a, a DVD that can be purchased later on. And so if that is something that you would like, you know, perhaps you attend and you decide this is something I really need to share with the rest of my family, um, that would be a good option. Or if it just doesn't work for you to attend, you, you'll have an opportunity to purchase that in the future. And just kind of stay tuned and we will, we will um, give you that information that, that, as that comes available. Yeah, the other thing I have coming up, uh, we did these last year. They're called the Field to Fork webinars. And these are webinars that really um, focus on gardening and um, preparing foods from, taking foods from the field to the fork, just like it's, yeah. just like it's called. These um, webinars are going to be held every Wednesday uh, starting February 22nd. And there are actually 10 of them. So we'll be going from February 22nd all the way through April 26th. And so, so these are get it all in before the season starts. That's for right. Gardening. During that planning season of gardening, the um, the um, sessions are something that because they're webinars, you sure can um, can sign up for them uh, through our website and just click on the field to fork link, and you can sign up to actually watch the webinar at at home, uh, wherever you have your computer, and do that. I am also going to be offering for folks who don't want to do that, who want to learn with in a group, I'm also going to offer the webinars a, a host site at the um, at the courthouse. So if you're interested in attending these webinars with a group of folks, you're welcome to sign up for that too. And so if you're interested in that part, please just give us a call at the at the office at 667-3340 and we'll get your name and we can send you some information about the different topics. And so just to kind of give you a few of the topics, the first one on February 22nd, we'll be talking about food safety from field to fork. Um, March 1, which will be probably a hot one, will be recommended veg vegetable varieties for North Dakota. So if you're planning so you're your planning garden. planning your garden, you can know what, what will go well. Right, what to get started looking at. And then March 8th will be what regulations apply when preparing food for the public. 
And um, then March 15th, we'll be talking about the U.S. food law and aligning the pieces of, regula- of the regulatory puzzle. And then March 22nd will be an introduction to home winemaking. Wow. Yes, yeah, so we have. You know, I feel like we're going to breed some more Pride of Dakota producers here. Uh, well, that's learning I think, how to. You know, that's one of those put hopes, it out I in the think. public. Yeah, yeah, and giving people the information, at least if they want to make that decision, they, they have a good idea about how to do that. These webinars are free of charge, um, whether you attend them, um, you know, individually using your computer or if you come and join our group at the Morton County Courthouse. Uh, again, if you want to come to join our site, please give me a call at 667-3340, and we would love to have you. That would be fun. Yeah, that would be fun. And kind of a nice little... Spring touch as we're still in the winter here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Kind of thinking about spring. Thinking about spring. One thing I should ma- mention is that the Field to Fork webinars this year are going to be held from two to three in the afternoon. So that is a little bit different than what they were than what they were last year. And if you're interested in the Field to Fork webinars from last year, when you go to our website, there are um, they do have the the presentations from last year archived, so you can go back and oh, look at great. them if you're interested. Yeah. So that's always an option too. So then uh, the last thing I wanted to visit with was, um, you know, tr- tips to stri- try and stay healthy and save money in 2017. You know, what are we, 11 days into the new year? And, and raise your we- hand if you still have your resolution <laughs> intact. I did mine. It was really easy. <laughs> oh, there so, you go. To delete my Facebook app off. Fa- oh. <laughs> so it's just a one and done. Accomplished <laughs> hey, for the year. There you go. So she's all done with that. You know, a lot of times we set ourselves up to fail and we, we kind of lose track of some of those things. So kind of wanted to focus a little bit on those three areas where you probably had a lot of your resolutions. Um, But one thing to think about, one area to consider would be to plan meals uh, a week at a time, which can help you with the family table piece if you want, if you're wanting to meet that challenge. It also helps you to save money. You can use the sale flyers to help you build your meals. Um, It helps you to balance your foods, making sure that you're getting, you know, enough fruits and vegetables, um, a quarter of your plate should be a protein-rich food. A quarter of your plate should be whole grain, and half of your plate should be fruits and vegetables. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, adding um, a dairy or calcium-rich food to complete your meal. We do have a great resource if you're interested in really delving into planning meals. Um, we have a, a series of, of um, bulletins that are called Now Serving Tasty Healthy Meals on a Budget. And we have weeks one through five. And why you might be interested in these, and you can find them online or you can sure give me a call, is that in these publications, so there's five of them, it gives you a full week of meals. And so it gives you an idea. You could even, during a family meal, you could pull one of these out and go through what's offered and listed as some of the meals. And, you know, maybe you have a yay-nay kind of thing going on with your family to say, well, that sounds like a good meal, and no, I don't really care about that one. And then, um, obviously, there are some things in here that are pretty obvious about how to make. But if it's something kind of new, then it offers the recipes for those things. So if you this is an um, all in one, it really is. So if you want to, for example, if you want to make calico beans, as uh, one of the mentioned mentioned ones in here, or a stir fry dinner, or cream tuna on toast, pizza buns, um, red beans and rice burritos, bread pudding. You know, some of these things are kind of old favorites. But if you don't have a recipe and are unsure about how to make it. This can kind of give you a jumping off point. And so with these five publications, you really have five whole weeks of planned meals. And so a great place to start, an easy way to make your uh, grocery list then too exactly, before, yep. you go to, before you go to the grocery store. And making sure we stick to the list is, of course, one of those good things to do too. Especially if you're watching your budget this yes, year. Yes, that's right. Um, another thing you can do with making that list is that if you're looking at coupons and making sure that you're using coupons for only things that you know you're going to to eat, um, it's not a great idea. You know, I always the great thing is uh, a coupon is is not that valuable. If you get a five dollar coupon for cat food, but you don't have a cat, right. it doesn't really do you any not good. That great. Yeah, so if you find great coupons that you can exchange with somebody and swap, that's also another good thing you can try. But, you know, so again, if you're interested in some of these meal planning tips, um, look for it online or give me a call. We can help you out. And just kind of a nice way to slide right into the new year and yeah, plan that and family table moments. Work towards those goals that you've set for your family this year. Mm-hmm. Right. 
great opportunity. So mm-hmm. we have lots of opportunities for families to learn new things, plan their garden, eat at the table, and plan their long-term health care insurance. There you go. Wow. We, we got, covered it we all. We covered it all. That's right. Well, everybody have a great week, and we will be back in a few weeks with the Extension Connection.